Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa time for Off the Press, where we take you through the front pages of the National Dailies. And as usual, we have a guest, Tunde Kolawale, who joins the conversation. Good morning, Tunde. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper now, uh, looking at the front page and uh, the banner caption. Uh, the front page says, direct primaries debate, we must avoid repeat of third term situation, wreck ones. That's what you find on uh, the banner caption for the leadership. You also have U type traveler's way option as airfares skyrocket. Please begin probe of eight children found dead in packed vehicle in Lagos. And you also have reps query and CDC over diverted nine billion naira COVID-19 fund. And APC class AKT council polls. Uh, you also have another caption saying CJN speaks on state of judiciary on Wednesday. And BUK unveils 15,000 student and job skin. That's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper. All right, away from the leadership, we'll move on next to the Punch uh, newspaper uh, this morning. Uh, the lead, the lead uh, caption for this morning, federal government fought British travel ban alleges most infected travelers from UK with several uh, riders there. Between November 22 and November 28, 67 inbound passengers tested positive the NCDC. United Kingdom suspends Nigerian's visa applications as restriction begins. U.S. demands COVID-19 negative tests from travelers shuns vaccination status. Beside the mass state, over 200,000 Nigerian refugees in Niger Republic, says UN agency. Rep. Summon Netza OGFTZ allege unremitted taxes by contractors. Above the masthead, there are other stories. Fuel subsidy hits 1.03 trillion naira. NNPC to deduct 199 billion naira from Federation account. Assos ultimatum to federal government and lecturers say demands unmet. Reps probe 9 billion naira COVID-19 fund paid into NCDC officials account. Above that, on the must, uh, the blue strip rather, Bankers Committee outlines $100 million for National Art Theater rehabilitation. Other uh, stories on the front page of the punch this morning. Man nabbed with 96 wraps of cocaine, five undergraduates arrested for drug trafficking. A Lagos sales of Doen, uh, son, others demand principles uh, prosecution. Khan prepares fresh suit against federal government on clerics' tenure. Others, eight Lagos children die in locked SUV. Police begin probe. Absentee PDP alleges pre-election results as APC uh, wins AKT local government polls. Let's move away from the Punch newspaper this morning and check out The Guardian. Uh, the banner caption reads, United Kingdom holds visa for Nigerians as expert acts federal government to reciprocate. That's the bold caption you find. Underneath, they are quite interesting uh, riders. Passengers stranded as British Airways cancel flights in out of Nigeria. United Kingdom dictates 80 new Omicron cases and ban to affect over 80, or I beg your pardon, over 8,000 Nigerian travelers. Citizens uh, UK coming from Nigeria to pay £2,285 for 10 days quarantine. And Canada no longer accepting COVID-19 tests results from Nigeria. Nine African countries. Global clinic data confirms new variant is less. Uh, find out what all of that's about. Uh, holiday travels on the restriction for ex liquidity crisis. Uh, this is some of the writers you find underneath the board caption of uh, the Guardian newspaper. You also find another header saying, South Kaduna's youth vow to defend communities against bandits. And can files fresh suit against CAC minister on controversial Kama 2020. Eight children found dead in locked car in Badagri. And that's it on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Away from the Guardian, the next paper we have on display is the Daily Trust. 
Well, it has other stories on its mind away from um, the, the travel advisory and, of course, um, all the bans there. Uh, cement price uh, skyrocket as companies declare record uh, profits. Uh, Dangote hey, BUA, Lafarge Rake, 469 billion in nine months. Senate wants more cement licenses. Manufacturers are blame low production uh, retailers for price surge. Other stories on the Daily Trust, Kano APC Crisis, Tinobu Shekarao meet, eight children found dead inside abandoned car in Lagos. Omicron experts are worried as Canada, UK ban Nigerian flights. A, go, a groom's parents, a sibling, six guests killed in Bayelsa Road crash. Gambian President Barra re-elected, ex-minister Bono Sharif dies at 74. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Tunde Kalawale, uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's uh, head straight to the crux thank of the matter. Know. All right, well, let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. The issue of direct uh, primaries and the debate surrounding it. Uh, the caption says, we must avoid repeat of third term situation. That's what Rex is saying. And, you know, INEC is worried about other key areas in the bill uh, that's overshadowed by direct primaries. Let's share your thoughts on this. After 20 years of this democracy, we are still talking about the third term. It means our allies the Nigerian men like political elites in particular are not ready to, to respect the due process of law and constitutional provision. And why is it that they are not ready? Political offices are too big. But that when people get there, they never wanted to leave again. General Lucia Kovac just started this up, even though he kept it in England. But not too long ago, former president of South Africa, Mr. Tabo Mbeki, came with a revelation that it is true that the Lucia Kovac don't want the short term. He also uh, referred us to, um, to General Abu Salam Abubaka, that it was the two of them who teamed up with the National Assembly. To frustrate the generation of passengers from um, getting a short term. So you begin to ask, would it be there is some glue that they put in the president's seat so that when they get there, they never want to leave the place again? There is no glue there. What is there is not the decision nature. And the lack of accountability when you get to offices in Nigeria. Furthermore, relate that. With what has happened in the Kiki state, the local government election is just conducted. The APC as a political party that conducted the election won all the seats. And here in the Kiki, we have some senators on the platform of the DPDP in the National Assembly. You have House of Representatives members. They have people in the State House of Assembly. How is it now possible for APC to win all the local government seats? In the city state. It's also because of that the National Assembly has proposed a direct primary of the different political parties in selecting whatever candidates who fly their flag. Because the leadership of the party, generally the governor, always and teach whomever they want to give any of these political offices uh, to. Unfortunately, if we were a serious minded nation, we shouldn't be dictated to political parties. The processes and procedures by which they will elect whatever candidate is to fly their flag. Or here is Nigeria. If the PC came to power, I have no apology about this. The fidelity of our electoral process, the sanctity of electoral process, free and fair election has been in abeyance since the APC came to power. There has not been any election that has been conducted under the APC that has been free and fair. Dr. Goodlord Jonathan and Professor Jekka did better than uh, the APC has been doing to get into power. And there is a party again that says he wants to continue in power for the next 50 years. So, the direct primary team 
if it is going to be an interim measure to ensure that we get the electoral process correct and the elections are free and fair, let it be welcome. But ultimately, we should have left all these things to the internal as an internal affair of the respective political parties. You don't start calling the shots for them. But nothing ever goes straight. They all ever done well without somebody somewhere put his partners in the way. When you remember too, when Lagos State conducted his own local government primary, the APC also cleared all the seats. And incidentally, the chairman of the Lagos INEC is a retired chief judge of Lagos State. And under her, such monumental fraud was committed. And you begin to ask yourself, what would this woman have been doing when she was the CGN of I mean, the chief judge of Lagos State? All right, uh, Barista Kolawali, uh, let's uh, slide on to the Punch uh, newspaper this morning. All right, uh, Omicron virus uh, is um, what's on the Punch's mind, and uh, the lead uh, caption here, Federal Government faults British travel ban, alleges most infected travelers uh, from UK, and there are several writers. So what, what's your opinion, really, concerning all of that? Uh, the federal government seems to be reactionary instead of being proactive. What do you think? My brother, uh, when you also look at uh, some of the papers that we are reading, you would have seen in there at the House of Red, the query NCDC, that uh, would give a count of about 9 billion naira that was uh, approved or given to them to manage the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, if such a uh, huge sum amount of money has been given to an agency of government either to develop a thing or to manage the COVID pandemic in Nigeria, and that money ended up in the account of certain person, will you now be surprised that COVID is beginning to ravage the country again? And that some countries of the world are uh, beginning to ban our people from coming over there. And now when you come over there, you'll be quarantined for about 14 days and pay as much as 2,280 something pounds for the hotel that you might be kept. All this is boil down to lack of visionary repression, corruption, and the lack of accountability. You and I remember that the last time we spoke on this issue, I said if a tiny country like Cuba can produce a vaccine for treating COVID, there's no reason why a nation of 200 million people, with all the reputable biologies that we have, both inside the country and outside the country, will not have been able to come up with its own. But it is the kind of money, the 9 billion, that has ended up in somebody's account. That would have been given to researchers to come up with uh, this uh, vaccine. And so somebody and some other people are probably intending to share or they put in some uh, uh, account to generate interest for them. Not caring whether COVID wipes out the whole, I mean, the rest of uh, uh, Nigeria. But I am not surprised that the UK and some other countries of the world uh, are uh, restricting. The movement of Nigeria and Mexico. In fact, the more they restrict it, the better it is for all of us. Because who are those who travel? It is the people, the rich people, their children, and then they leave the rest of us, the ordinary poor people, to begin to wrestle with poverty, to begin to wrestle with protocol, wrestle with uh, uh, COVID, wrestle with uh, bandits, wrestle with kidnappers. Wrestle with the Aoi Aoi boys who go into a bank account and clean it out. Not all manners of things. Just look at all the pages of all the newspapers. Is there any charity news that you can find on the pages of those newspapers today? There is none. That is the status with which the Nigerian political elite have rendered and left the nation. 
Okay, so but, but let's also, you know, still stay with the variant and uh, some of the actions that we're getting from the international, you know, community. Now, some experts are saying that Nigeria and other African countries should reciprocate the same gesture of, you know, ban travel because it feels like, uh, you know, these measures restricting uh, Nigerians and other African countries to getting into their country is so uh, such a stringent action. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? The kind of um, in-depth actions that um, the uh, advanced countries of the world is able to impose on their people. Why do I say this? Very negligible percentage of our people are in paid employment. The bulk of the people are in the informal sector of the economy. If they don't go out on a particular day, they will not be able to earn a living. They won't be able to put food on their table. Think about the focanizer. Think about the example bus driver. Think about the woman who sells pure water in the motor park. Do we have uh, a kind of um, palliatives or a kind of uh, money that we can be giving to these people on a daily basis to make ends meet if they don't go out? The answer is uh, no. So if we don't have that kind of a measure on them, how will you be able to restrict people's uh, movement? How do you deny them their means of livelihood? So, as much as the British people would love us to do some of these things, the reality on ground in Nigeria will make it uh, almost uh, absolutely impossible. More importantly, too, do the people in the arm of leadership, do they command respect from our people? Up to now, many of our people are still skeptical. They don't even believe that the COVID-19 exists. And the few that believe, they think it is an allied disease. It is a disease for the rich people that should not bother them. And you won't be surprised why they take this attitude. There has been a deficit, trust deficit, between the Nigerian people and the political leadership. Because the leaders, 99.6% of time, tell lies, and engage in propaganda to the Nigerian people. And so even when issues are right, which are truthful, and the leadership come out to say, the ordinary Nigerian doesn't believe them. They think that uh, part of the life they have always told. So Tunde Kola Wale, Tunde Kola Wale, um, do you think that Nigeria should reciprocate, you know, the same gesture uh, with other African countries? Because, I mean, you see uh, Western countries that have cases, or even more cases of uh, the variant and, you know, COVID-19. They're not subjected to the same restriction. I would like to share your thoughts on that quickly. So it's impossible for Nigeria to reciprocate that gesture. Some of these Nigerians, are carrying uh, two, three passports. They are both British and Nigerian citizens. Furthermore, Nigeria is next deep in debt with uh, the British government. Furthermore, most of them, when they steal money in Nigeria, they take it to places like Britain to go and buy houses. Their children are over there. In that safe haven. They have more stake in the British economy, in the British society, than they even have in Nigeria. Nigeria is just their business center, is their company, where they come to make their money, and then they take it to Britain to enjoy it. So when they have that kind of an American, they won't have the moral, and then the political will, to reciprocate the kind of self that the Britain as a mother European countries, which is the Nigerian people. All right, Ambassador Kolawale, let's stay with the, the punchers. You know, another story there above the masthead. Fuel subsidy hits 1.03 trillion naira, NNPC to deduct 199 billion naira from the Federation account. What are your thoughts exactly? Well, I will uh, first and foremost repeat what I said the last time we spoke. That the political party, when it was a campaign for the election 2015, 
said that subsidy is a scam, that there is no scheme. Why is that political party now that it is in power even pay for subsidies than the previous government? Something is wrong in there. You see that? There is lack of accountability, or the money has been diverted, or we are part to what we do in those days. When people bring in vessels, about two, three vessels from Nigeria with oil, they will go and um, file application to prepare for about 10, 15 vessels. Furthermore, some of these petroleum products get diverted to some of these neighboring countries. They are not consumed by Nigerians. Where is even the statistics? Do we have actual evidence to show this is the quantum of petroleum products that the Nigerian people consume on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? The statistics are not there. So what is the parameter of paying the subsidies? I want to believe that we are part of the regime of uh, camps in the area of express of the payment. And for the Nigerian airlines and the politicians in particular, to now impose this burden on the Nigerian people, to start using this subsidy to punish the Nigerian people again, my least so very serious people on red. Because people already push to the wall already in terms of their ability to get their means of livelihood. And when you now remove the source cost of city and where prices goes up, prices across the range, across the broad spectrum of the economy, will skyrocket. And when they skyrocket, the Nigerian people will not be able to make ends meet. Poverty will increase. People will not be able to pay their own rent. Nepal bill is also there. Transportation will go up. I would advise this government to put on a thinking cap and find a solution to this problem. Let's have a concrete audit and let's all know the quantum of petroleum products that the Nigerian people consume on a daily basis before we, be, before we begin to talk about them. Payment or non payment or withdrawal or non withdrawal of a fuel. Um, uh, All right, let's move away from that down and check out the uh, Guardian newspaper where Saad and Kaduna youths have vowed to defend their communities against bandits, uh, saying that we're going to take arms. That's what it means. We're going to defend ourselves. What are your thoughts on that? Under the Nigerian constitution, there's the right to self-defense. If an arm robber, for example, invade the house in the middle of the night, the first duty that the law imposes on you is to stand up to the armed robber and defend yourself before you even call in the police. All that the law expects of you is to use minimum force in defending yourself. So if the Southern Kaduna youth uh, are standing up to the reality and uh, your life now, that they need to defend themselves, I think the law will fight for them. I think the law will oppose whatever action that they take in that direction. Too many people have been killed in Southern Kaduna without uh, people being adequately punished for it, without protection being provided for the people of that uh, region. In fact, in my own book, you know, it is even late for the youth of Southern Kaduna to now begin to say this. This is an action they should have taken a long time ago. If the government in power at the local government level in Kaduna, at the state level in Kaduna, and here at the federal level, is unable to provide security for the people of Southern Kaduna. And we continue to see this genocide and massacre of people on a daily basis. Then what are the youth waiting for? They should by now form Vilande, Vilande, and begin to defend their community. This is what the former uh, uh, deputy governor of CBN, uh, who was very prosperous on this issue, laid down his uh, life for. So, it is due to the good memory of that man 
if the, your, the youth of Southern Kaduna stand up to the historical responsibility of defending their community, the governor of Kaduna says, he's all mouth, he makes all noises, he says he has bought drones, he has saved uh, some bandits to leave the community alone. Yes, we don't see any results in that direction. The youth should do whatever is necessary to ensure that their people can speak with, can speak with both eyes closed on a daily basis. That we, women are never raped again, that children are never killed, that pastors are never abducted, taken to the bushes, and ransom taken from them. That's my take on that. All right, uh, Barrister Kola uh, still on the Guardian newspaper. The Kama 2020 is still in the news. A can files fresh suit against CAC Minister on Controversial Kama 2020. Your reactions, please. Well, I have always been surprised about the attitude of the Christian community. So, the laws that have been established and put in the camera to make sure that the churches, the religious centers, the civil society organizations account for whatever money passes through their hands. The church, the mosque, and the traditional religious worship places are not supposed to be business centers. Whatever money goes into those places in terms of size, offering, and donations are public funds which the church must account for. Why the churches, in, for example, now take this money as their personal money, as their private money, as money that they do not account for, is a shock, it's a surprise to me. It is only in Nigeria that does happen. Everywhere you go into the world, there are commissions that are set up in Britain, in America, in Germany, and order to regulate the activities of a religious uh, center, civil society organizations, research institutes, so that whatever money that passes through their hands, it is audited on a daily basis, and then I can't render to some of these commissions that have been set up. Most pastors in those places, most imams in those places, most directors of the civil society organizations, they are on salary. If they are only entitled to their salary, they cannot begin to use the form that is in the part of the church to buy private debt for themselves, to build houses for themselves, to send their children to some of the best schools around the world. And government now makes a law that is to account for the money that passes to their You said no. They also say, say they have been a pastor for four or eight years. You say no, you want to be a life pastor. There will be no retirement for you. When under the Nigerian law, they are specific as regards how many number of years you can um, serve in the civil service, you can serve in the army, you can serve in the police, you can serve in the bank, and sending so many of these other places. They are in the, in the judiciary, they are like, let take this. So why would people want to be general of assets or pastors at the age of 80, at the age of 70, when the military reform has set in? The church, the mosque, the traditional religious worship places, if there are no skeletons in their cover, they should comply with the law that we have in the Kama. For example, Nathan tried it before, but they made sure that the National Economic Intelligence Agency has proposed that uh, program to uh, um, President Jonathan were kicked out of office. Now the Bwari administration has had the courage to make I mean, to put the thing into law. The churches, the mosque, and some of these traditional people, so to say, are now rising against it. Some say they have no case to comply with the law. The church is not a private uh, enterprise of anybody. It's not a business center. No pastors should be there for more than 10 years. Nobody should be general of years for more than 10 years. There must be a retirement time for both the pastors, for both the imams, and the chief priests of the shrine. That's my take, sir. 
All right, uh, uh, Barrister Kolawale, there's one more story we should take on The Guardian. Let's just uh, look at it uh, very quickly. Eight children found dead in locked car in Badagri, area of Lagos. My brother, all this is concerned with the fact that uh, human beings no longer have value, human life no longer have value in Nigeria. Eight children, for God's sake, about two weeks ago, too, there was a report in the media that a puppy in one of the schools in Lagos was uh, beaten to death by his uh, police. When you also go to the South East, look at the number of youths that, lost, that have lost their lives in the encounter with the different uh, security agencies. The youth, the children, are the prime masters of any society, of any country. That is why you find now in places like Germany, Britain, and all that. Special provisions and priorities are placed on the children until they attain the age of uh, 18. They say to provide milk for them, free education for them, clothing when it is necessary, free medical facilities. But here, we are trafficking our children. We are using them for ritual. A child will go to a church in Undo State and disappear. And then the people who are managing the church will not be able to attend for the whereabouts of that um, of that child. And then the court has pleased the church leaders who are supposed to give an account of the disappearance of those children. See, the truth of the matter is that it is not impossible that those children that were found that were found inside those buses are being trafficked from somewhere, locked up inside that vehicle without ventilation. And in the process they died. And the person who is trafficking them came to abandon them where the vehicle has been found. This is speculation. The police will be the one to determine Point in time and to tell of the circumstances that have led to the death of these children. Where the children were coming Bye, from. Tunde, Kola where Wale, thank you so much. To. We have to let you go at this and point. Who owns the vehicle that was used to bury them to the point that which they were found to be dead? Uh, thank you so much for being part of the, uh, you know, the conversation off the press and uh, sharing your thoughts. We look forward to having more of you on the show. Thank you so much. We do appreciate Barrister Tunde uh, Kola Wale. Is a, of course, I call him a barrister. He's a legal practitioner. Many thanks, and uh, we appreciate your time.